Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual bacteria that seems to prefer living in meteorites. And we'll also talk about why this is somewhat important to science. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to bacteria types, there is quite a lot of diversity on our planet. Essentially, most of the life here are the bacteria. But the bacteria that we're talking about today is this right here. Metallosphera sedula, as the name implies, has something to do with metals. And more specifically, these unusual bacteria have a tendency to thrive in very toxic to humans environment. More specifically, in acidic and extreme environments similar to those found in the Yellowstone National Park. So essentially it's what's known as an extremophile. And for the most part they get energy from non-organic matter, from essentially chemicals that humans just can't really use. And just like so many other archaea bacteria or so many other extremophiles, these bacteria were very likely the predominant species on the planet long long time ago. Essentially when our planet was barren and had very very little in terms of the atmosphere or really anything on the surface, these bacteria were probably already creating a lot of stuff in the actual soils. And eventually, through the interaction with soils, some of the early bacteria were able to create layers and layers of various metals and various useful chemicals for other bacteria to take over. We believe today uh, that eventually some of the other bacteria used that leftover material from early bacteria to eventually start producing a lot of methane that we believe may have warmed up our planet. Methane is really the only reasonable explanation for how our planet became warm early on in the solar system. Without methane, we are unfortunately stuck with the so-called early sun paradox. I've talked about this briefly in one of the other videos you can check out on the channel. But in a nutshell, we believe that early on, the sun was actually much, much less active than today. It produced a lot less temperature and so if Earth was in the same position, it was very likely very cold. And because we know that Earth did have liquid water early on in the creation of the solar system, this can only be explained if the Earth's atmosphere was much thicker or possessed more greenhouse gases like methane and a lot of CO2. So in order to avoid the idea of having a snowball Earth for billions of years, the only explanation we can actually give is that bacteria very likely produced a lot of methane that then converted the atmosphere, making it a little bit warmer. At least that's one of the more prominent theories right now. And so doing research on these unusual bacteria that we still have from um, basically billions of years ago is exceptionally important for us in order to understand how our planet transformed into something that looks like this. So this is why scientists today want to study a little bit more about these bacteria and also find a way to use them in the future. And it just so happens that we may have found at least one such bacteria that could actually transform both our understanding of how Earth became like this and also possibly where life even came from, but most importantly, be actually usable in the future for mining. So it turns out that the researchers that were investigating this unusual bacteria when using a meteorite that was found in, in North Africa a while ago, that you can actually quite easily buy online as well, um, and then using that particular meteorite's material for growing bacteria in it, discovered something really strange. Bacteria didn't just grow inside this meteorite, it thrived in there. It actually preferred to live in the material from the meteorite known as NWA1172 than it did in actual rocks here on Earth. And if a bacteria prefers to live in a meteorite than it does in the rock here on Earth, would that actually imply panspermia or the transfer of life through the meteorites from one object to another? Now let's not rush into any conclusions because it really doesn't imply that just yet. There is a very reasonable explanation for why this bacteria does prefer to live or to actually thrive in the rock from space rather than a rock from here on Earth. And one of the more obvious explanations here is that the meteorite rock was just a lot richer in various metals and also was a lot more porous and had a lot more holes in it compared to rock here on Earth. So it was much easier for the bacteria to spread and it had a lot more resources that it could consume. 
But nevertheless, this does present a really, really interesting idea of bacteria easily surviving in meteorites, while at the same time possibly being able to transfer from planet to planet even in the future. Like for example, if suddenly there is a meteorite that decides to hit planet Earth and creates a large enough explosion that we're going to simulate right here in a few seconds, that actually creates a lot of debris flying out of the planet, some of those rocks might possess the bacteria I just mentioned. And it also suggests that some of this bacteria might one day basically get uh, to explore space and to travel around the galaxy. Okay, unfortunately it didn't work this first time, let's try this again with a slightly larger rock. And so here we just want to see uh, the rocks uh, being thrown out of Earth's system. And here we go, there is maybe some parts here that are sort of visible, but they're not actually moving fast enough to escape the um, Earth's gravity. Unfortunately, this piece will most likely fall back into the planet. But because we have a lot of power here in Universe Sandbox, we can actually change its velocity so it does escape um, the planet. So let's try this again, and it looks like we succeeded. So here's that rock, potentially with the bacteria present inside of it, that will now be traveling across the galaxy and uh, very likely at some point hit some other planet somewhere else in the galaxy. And this could be how panspermia works. And because we discovered that this bacteria seems to thrive inside meteorites, um, we don't know for how long, but it does for some time at least, it's possible that this is how various uh, types of life could potentially transfer across galaxy to other star systems. But a much more practical finding from this study is not in regards to panspermia or in regards to where life could have come from. I mean, there's still a lot of speculation here, but we need to do a lot more studies before we can definitely conclude if this ever happened, that life somehow transferred from planet to planet. What we can conclude, however, is that this very strange extremophile bacteria seems to enjoy living inside various asteroids and seems to actually produce materials that we could then use for production of other stuff. In other words, we can literally just take a bunch of the bacteria and find a way to launch it to a nearby asteroid that could potentially have a lot of various metals. And then by putting the bacteria inside the asteroid, we could create an autonomous mining colony, or basically a way for us to mine asteroids without really doing anything. And because this bacteria seems to really enjoy living inside these asteroids, for as long as we find a way for it not to, well, basically die in the cold vacuum of space, we could then turn these large asteroids into very profitable business, kickstarting the next gold rush as I mentioned in one of the previous videos. Now the best asteroid for this would of course be this right here, this is known as 16 Psyche, although a much more familiar image that some of you may have seen looks somewhat like this, and NASA is already planning a mission here. This is currently the largest deposit of somewhat unexposed metals and all kinds of minerals and resources that are actually really precious to us here on Earth. In other words, this could be one of the future missions to use this bacteria or some other similar bacteria to create um, an autonomous and self-sustaining colony that mines all of the materials for us by using the bacteria that seems to really enjoy living there. And obviously there are a lot of other things we need to consider first, such as for example, whether uh, this bacteria can even survive in other types of um, meteorites and asteroids by testing this using other samples. But most importantly, we need to find a way to automate all of this process using the modern 3D printing technology, which has already advanced to the point where we could use it in space and create various autonomous stations with it. And so by using this bacteria in combination with various 3D printers, we could then extract and 3D print all of the necessary materials right there on site and then bring them back to Earth. And another important finding from this study is that um, by looking and seeing what bacteria does to this particular meteorite, we were able to find or to kind of create all kinds of bias signatures. In other words, we can now see what bacteria does to the rock after the material inside the meteorite has been transformed by the bacteria. And so now, if we ever find a meteorite here on the planet, and if for some reason we suspect this meteorite might have life in it, by looking at those biosignatures and comparing them to the ones from this study, we can kind of determine if there was life or if there was nothing in it. And when I just started studying astrobiology, there was actually a lot of talk about this uh, meteorite right here, 
where there was actually a claim for life being found. This came from Mars and was found in uh, 1984 in Antarctica. This is actually what was discovered inside of the meteorite and um, one of the major scientists back then, David McKay, proposed that this was actually signs of life. But the professor who I was working under back then actually said the opposite. He suggested that this was just a naturally occurring um, biomorphic shapes that can easily be created by inorganic processes. And the team behind this sort of disproval paper showed that it was totally possible to create something very similar in a typical rock without any life in it. And so in that sense, it's still very interesting to study these meteorites to try to discover where life may have come from, if there was actually life on Mars, and if life did come from Mars, because this is what was implied by this discovery. And so by studying various um, effects of bacteria on meteorites and trying to compare them to findings from other meteorites will definitely help us answer this question. But because I'm a much more practical person, I also do enjoy the idea or the thought of using this bacteria for turning them into miniature mining colonies. So I'm more excited to hear about studies or actual engineering projects that will take this bacteria and try to find a way to create a mining colony somewhere out there so we can turn our reality into my favorite TV show, The Expanse. Anyway, on that note, check out the study in the description below and let's finish this video by essentially standing right here on the surface of 16 Psyche. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.